There was a, an expectation, I think, and a, a real strong desire on the part uh, of both the team and the fans to, to move towards uh, a resolution in terms of the, the narrative arc of the present. So that was one of the, the major driving factors. Um, and that influenced our pursuit of the sort of themes that we would eventually explore in the past and helped us narrow uh, down a choice uh, for where we would set the game uh, when it would take place, where it would take place. This idea of a uh, inevitable conflict between two competing ideologies, uh, mirrored both in past and present, led us towards a moment of revolution. And then it was a matter of finding you know, the right revolution. And we eventually opted for a variety of reasons for the American Revolution. Um, because in many ways, it's one of the, the first that is uh, at least taught in, in schools to a, to a larger degree. Um, but then it has a lasting impact, right? It, it, it shortly thereafter spreads to France and throughout Europe. Uh, there are echoes of it in both directions, right? The sentiments uh, that are expressed during the American Revolution are much older than the revolution itself. This idea of, of yearning for justice and equality and freedom date back you know, thousands of years and then extend forward at least now several centuries. So it felt like something that was timeless and all-encompassing um, and that it dovetailed quite nicely with the um, the increasing tension between the Templars and the Assassins both in past and present so there just seemed to be this really perfect unity um, in terms of, of themes and ideas uh, and that's just sort of how it all started we decided we wanted to, to move in this specific direction and it, it, it grew out of that the idea uh, for us was to try and find a way into the story where the player's experience was was mirrored at least you know as much as possible by the the protagonist experience and so we felt like if we were going to tell a story that took place during the american revolution we should start with someone that's coming in from from outside of the conflict and that was how we eventually started moving towards um having a, a native american protagonist was that much like the the player he would be coming into this society into this world um, of, of at least colonial america for the first time and it also gave us an opportunity to show um, you know very cleanly and clearly and easily like in a, in a very easily understood manner what uh, what it is to be the victim of oppression right it happens to him very early on in the game when his village is attacked um, and burned and his mother's life is lost as a result of this there's this immediate moment of you know understanding that there are forces out there that are moving closer and closer towards um, you know towards a an unpleasant resolution um, and then he sets off to try and push this this back to, to try and do something about it because he sees a, a world in which no one else is actually you know fighting back really and eventually he'll come into contact with people that are starting to resist and and he'll start working with them but um, initially he thinks he's alone and then he finds the assassins and then he thinks that he's found something, or at least a similar ideology, in the Patriot cause, but he never joins them. And obviously, as the story continues on, there will be revelations that, that are spoilers, so I can't say much. Oh, <laughs> uh, you have no idea. I have an Excel sheet back at the office that lists all of the events and all of the people, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. I mean, there were so, like, we had too many amazing things to choose from. It was very hard to narrow it down. Um, and there was a lot of stuff that we would have loved to do, but the game would have been 800 million hours long. It would never end it. I mean, there was so much, you know, we wanted to do. So narrowing it down was like definitely a challenge. I couldn't even tell you how it happened. It just sort of happened over time as we, we each fell in love with different, you know, moments. And a lot of it was defined by, um, uh, you know, the, the Templars that Connor's going to be going up against, uh, where he would find them and what they would be doing helped define which of the events that we would, you know, touch upon and, and why. So the sort of assassin Templar conflict help us helped us narrow down which historical events we would uh, we would choose to to sort of push in on. I spend a lot of time working with the mission design team. Um, they're the guys that build the missions, and you know their team also built out the world basically. Um, and so I just spend a lot of time with them, um, talking about what I what my needs are from a narrative standpoint. They talk about what their needs are from a, a game design or mission design standpoint, and we find ways to to give each other you know what we each need. It's a it's intensely collaborative. There's a lot of back and forth. Um, I don't know how to really define the process beyond we spend a lot of time talking together um, and, and, and working together and trying to find a way to marry narrative and, and gameplay and, and level and mission design. 
In instances where a historical event happened at a specific location, then it was very easy. We knew we would be going there. Um, in other instances, we tried to have moments where you might, um, heading from one mission to another, pass by one of these locations. Or we might create side content that is occurring or calling your attention to a specific location so that, you know, in the event it's not something you hit in the main path, there's something in the game that attracts you towards it so that you can, you know, experience it and interact with it and learn about it. So it's a mix of, of lots of different things, different, different techniques, depending on what was available to us. There was so much of it. Um, I read a couple of nonfiction, just you know, historical recaps of the period uh, at the very beginning, but then quickly moved on to um, a lot of first-person sources, letters, uh, journals, diaries, proclamations, newspapers, what they called broadsheets back then, trying to just get a sense of the, the language, the flavor, the, the culture, what life was like in the cities back then. And then, um, because even with a year of uh, research, I'm, I'm just not a history expert, right? I, I know like this much more than the, the average person because I only spent a year doing it. So we work with people that have spent far much uh, more time doing it. We have a guy on the team, Max Durand, who functioned as a historical consultant. He was there to answer my questions, to, to review stuff that I wrote, to make sure that like it, it fit the history. And then we had another guy who works as a professor at the University uh, McGill in town who would review the scripts as well. And we would talk about you know all the aspects, all the elements, you know, how to how to make it more accurate when when we had to take creative liberties why and you know I have to defend it to him and then he would say okay that makes sense I understand it or he would say well maybe there's a way for you to have both and so have you tried this approach and so there was a, a bunch of back and forth with them as well I guess what I'd want the the fans and players to know is that we we think about them constantly and that um, you know everything at least that I do I, I do with them in my in my mind and um, and yeah, I mean, to me, it's really important because I feel like a lot of people don't always have a, a great insight or window into, into how game production works and they think it can be a cold or, or um, you know, uncaring thing where we treat everyone or see everyone as consumers and, you know, they're just people to, to, to give us money and take our box product. And I don't know, I'm a gamer too and I, wa I want them to know that, that like, you know, I, I spend my, my days and nights doing this because I, I not, not only do I love what I do, but I, I want other people to as well, right? I, I want them to feel like their investment in, in the game and in the franchise is, uh, is worthwhile. I want them to feel like, you know, they've been treated with respect and, and um, I just want them to know that at least I'm always there thinking about them first. I, I really am, you know, I know and I, I think sometimes people don't realize that that we are people and, and we, do, we do think about our fans and we do think about the players and we care about them very much um, and that we aren't these cold, faceless, greedy, you know, machines. They may exist somewhere, but it's, it's not us at least. Like, we, we want to do good work and we want people to enjoy themselves. Okay. And, and if they don't, it's, it's not because we didn't try, it's just because I guess I didn't succeed, but, but I'm always trying. <laughs> okay.